Ever wondered about flying with firearms? Well, I just flew to South Carolina. I'm getting settled in my hotel room and I have a little bit of downtime. So I figured I'd make a video talking about flying with firearms, the process, my experiences, and then do a little travel EDC drop at the end. Let's get to it. What's going on, Luke from USA Carry here. It's been a minute since I've uploaded a video. I just got back from a two week elk hunt in Colorado where I rarely had internet. I was home for two days and then flew out to South Carolina this morning to attend the Palmetto State Armory Media Days event. We'll be hitting the range all day tomorrow and touring some of their facilities later this week. So keep an eye out for some videos or articles on usacarry.com covering that. And real quick, if you're new to the channel, I do firearm and gear reviews, defensive gun use breakdowns, and other concealed carry EDC type of videos. If you like that kind of content, click the subscribe button below, hit the bell to be notified when we publish new videos. And while you're down there, hit the like button. YouTube likes that stuff, so I appreciate it. Anyway, I'm just getting to my hotel room in Columbia, South Carolina, and before I unpacked everything, I figured I'd do a little video talking about flying with firearms and then do a travel EDC drop to show you what I carry with me when I travel. So first off, let's start with the guns. I get this question a lot from you guys asking how to travel with firearms, how to fly with firearms. Can you put ammo in the same box as firearms? Can you put the firearm case inside your other suitcase? So I wanna answer some of those questions here. It's a fairly painless process. I've never really had any issues other than one time landing back in New Orleans, which I'll get to in a bit. So first off, you wanna check the laws of the state you're flying to to make sure you're all legal. If you plan on carrying concealed, you need to make sure that state recognizes your permit or license from your state or that they're a state that has constitutional carry for non-residents. There's some states that have constitutional carry, but it's only for residents, so you need to check all that stuff. You can check our concealed carry maps, which I'll probably put up over the screen here. They're free to use, and you can check the reciprocity or constitutional carry for each state, who honors your license or permit, and all that good stuff. I live in Louisiana and have a Louisiana concealed handgun permit, which South Carolina honors, so I'm good to go. Next up are the guidelines by the TSA. You'll wanna check those. I'll leave a link in the description below. And then also the guidelines of the airline that you're flying with. They have their own guidelines sometimes, so you need to check both to make sure you're complying with each. But generally, the firearms need to be in a lockable, hard-sided case. Do not use TSA locks because you're the only person that's supposed to be able to access the case that has the firearms. If you don't know what TSA locks are, they're locks that allow the TSA to open up with a master key. There's like a little red symbol on them. I'll probably throw that up on the screen here. And actually my bag has TSA locks built into them. So don't use TSA locks on your firearm case. The firearms need to be unloaded and you'll wanna to go to the ticketing counter or wherever you check the bags in inside and tell them you're declaring firearms. Then just follow their instructions from there. It might be obvious, but you can't check these at the curbside check-in. You'll wanna walk past them and go inside to the ticketing counter. Now, this is the first time it's happened to me, but I've heard of it happening before, is them putting a zip tie around my case. They apparently did this here in South Carolina now, I guess that's supposed to prevent me from opening the case in the airport, but if you have a knife in your other luggage, then you can just grab your knife, pop it open, and you're good to go. So one tip is to put a knife in your other check bag if you have one. Now, normally I would have got my case, gone to the restroom, popped the zip tie, and put my gun on, but I had somebody waiting on me and I was going straight to the hotel, so I just got in the car. Anyway, let's open this up and I'll show you how I have it set up to fly. So for the tags, you just have your normal luggage tag, and there's another one that states not to put the bag on the carousel. I'll get to that in a little bit as well. Okay, so this is an old pistol case that I've been using for flying that my dad gave me. Been using it for a few years. I think I'd like to get something a little nicer, like a nice Pelican case, but it does the job for now. All right, so you've got this card that they make you sign when you first get to the ticketing agent. Basically just a form stating that the firearms are unloaded, right? So the agent signs it, dates it, and then you just put your signature in it, and then you'll put it in here. She'll verify that they're unloaded, or maybe she won't. 
and then they'll have you close it up and lock it. So I like to have my chambers open so that if they look at the guns, they can clearly see that they're unloaded. I don't put magazines in them. I also like to put them back in the holster that I'm using. That way, when I'm ready to put it on, if it's at the airport or not, I can just load my mags, pop it in the holster, and I'm good to go. I don't have to go digging through another bag looking for my holsters or anything like that. So that's my Glock 19, Glock 43L I've got. Got 100 rounds of ammo. As far as ammo goes, you can have it in the same case as the firearms. It needs to be in the original manufacturer's box or a box made for ammo. I like using these MTM cases that hold 100 rounds. So I'm carrying mostly Hornady Critical Defense with a little bit of 365 carry ammo from SIG just because I didn't have 100 rounds. So there's my ammo. I got some foam wedges. This is the one I've been using for a while that I got from KSG Armory. You can see that it's been used up pretty well. I'm not sure if it's focusing on that or not, but anyway. So there's some Velcro on the back of this. Just stick that there. That helps push the gun back into me and it makes it a little bit more comfortable. I try to put just the tip so when this is rolling in, it's pushing on that foam. It makes it a little more comfortable. Since this one's on its way out, I got these two foam, I think they're called muzzle pads from Dark Star Gear. I'll link to those in the description below as well. A little strange looking, but they are for your holster. One's firmer than the other. They have two different styles, a normal firmness and a soft firmness. I think this one's the soft one. Um, I haven't tried these out yet, but since that one's on its way out, I figured I'd bring them to give them a try. So I guess you just, Kind of stick them there, and there you go. You got your foam wedge. Also have these on this holster. And if you're wondering, I brought my Glock 19 MOS Gen 5, running a Trigicon RMR and a TLR7. That's that set up. And then like I said, my Glock 43L, which is basically just a Glock 48 slide on top of my Glock 43 frame. This is fairly new for me, so keep an eye out for a review on this pretty soon. And then I've got my, I usually put whatever defensive knife I am carrying into the case as well, so I can grab that and strap that on as well. This is a kernel blade. I carry this in the appendix position opposite from my pistol. So it goes something like that. I think they're still on some kind of hiatus. I haven't checked in a while, but I don't think you can buy these anymore. And then, under here, I just have all my magazines. I've got three Glock 19 magazines. I grabbed a couple of magazines from my Glock 17, and I've got four magazines from my 43, and I also have a dry fire magazine, so I can do some dry fire practice here in the hotel room. And yeah, a question I get a lot is, can you put your firearm case into your other bag? And yes, you can. I tried to do that this time in a smaller case, because this one's quite big and heavy. So I threw the guns and magazines and the ammo in that, put my locks on it, put it in my other bag, so I didn't have to pay for another bag fee, but I was over the weight limit, and I knew I'd be bringing stuff back from this trip, so I decided to grab this case and pay the second bag fee small fee for being able to protect myself. All right, so you declare your firearms, you follow the instructions from the agent, and this is where I've had some different experiences. This morning, once I locked my case and got my other bags checked in, she told me to walk over and make sure that the bag makes it through the x-ray scanner, just in case that agent needed to open it up. So I just walked over, waited for it to go through the x-ray scanner, and as soon as it started going to the back, I headed over to go through security. Now, sometimes I've had to take the case itself and bring it over to another x-ray scanner where a TSA person checked it out and then made sure it went through the scanner as well. So be prepared for the process to be a little different depending on what airport you're in or the airline you're flying. Now, when you reach your destination, you go down a baggage claim as usual. The case the firearm is in is supposed to be brought to the baggage office for that airline, but that's where I've seen some differences sometimes. Remember the tag that says, do not put it on the carousel? Well, the last time I came back from the SHOT Show and landed in New Orleans, I went over to the baggage office and waited for my firearm and it started taking way too long. Luckily, I popped my head out the office and I saw it sitting on the carousel going round and round. 
I got a little aggravated and asked them what was going on. They said, oh, they've been doing that all day and just kind of brushed it off. So be prepared for things to not go as planned or how they're supposed to. If it's taking a while, you might want to check the carousel. Today, I was sitting at the baggage claim waiting for my other bag to come out. And I figured I'd grab that and then go to the office. And then some guy came out the office, asked for Luke, said, that's me. He said, hey, are you waiting for something? So I went over, showed him my ID, grabbed my case. He told me that they put the zip tie on it here in South Carolina. And then I went on my way. And then one time when I landed in Vegas, it didn't go to a baggage office. There was like a roped off area that I noticed a bunch of bags were sitting at and there was an agent standing there. So I went over to her and asked her, is this where I pick up my declared firearm? Which she said, yes. So sometimes that process can be a little different. If you're not sure, just ask somebody. From what I've noticed, everyone's pretty much used to people flying with firearms. So you shouldn't get a strange reaction asking about that stuff. You'll have to show your driver's license to pick up your firearm. And while the TSA does have guidelines for all of this, the process can be a little bit different each time. So just be prepared for that. So I think that covers it as far as flying with firearms. Just make sure you're following the TSA guidelines and the guidelines from the airline and you should be good to go. Comment below and let me know what you've experienced flying with firearms. Most of the people I talk to say they never have any problems. Now I'll go over some of the stuff I had on me when I was flying. Some of you may have seen this before, but I'll start with my AFAC. It's my ankle first aid kit. This is made by Riker Nylon Gear. I'll link to that in the description below as well. This thing is super comfortable. I usually have this on me at all times, unless I'm wearing shorts. That would look a little weird. But I wore this the whole time I was hunting in Colorado on that elk hunt and had no issues whatsoever. Pretty much after I strap it on, I kind of forget it's there. You don't have to put it on too tight. It kind of just sits above your shoe. I do make it tight enough to where it's not flopping around, but it's still pretty comfortable. So I've got a cat tourniquet, some extra gauze, and in here in this little pocket, I've got some gloves. And here I've got a clotting agent and this inside pouch, I've got a chest seal. So that's my little trauma kit. Like I said, I keep this on me at all times. If I'm not wearing it on my ankle, I usually have a bag with me and it's in the bag. So this goes everywhere with me. The next thing I have on me, which is a secondary tourniquet is a rat's tourniquet. So I just wear this around my hips. Now these Defiance jeans by Vertex have these pass-throughs on the bottom of each belt loop. This gives me a secondary tourniquet. I always have a cat on me, but this is so easy to carry that I figure, hey, why not, right? So that's that. All right, so the rest of this stuff isn't really firearms related, but I'm gonna go over my backpack and show you what I have on me when I'm traveling. If you're not interested, click up here on this defensive gun use breakdowns playlist. But some of you might be interested. So in my pockets, I have my phone in this pocket, some chapstick, wallet, which is a Ridge wallet. It's like a minimalist wallet that you can put cards in here, put some cash under this cash strap. It's made to be carried in your front pocket, which I like. I don't like having stuff in my back pockets. And what else? I had my AirPods, all right, headphones. That's pretty much all that I had on my person. I don't like having a bunch of stuff in my pockets or on me going through security checkpoints so I can just empty what I have real quick and get on through. The belt I'm using is a Nex belt EDC gun belt. It's one of those ratchet type belts. I'm actually in the middle of doing a review on this, but they also sent me a new belt that they're launching and I'm gonna try to do that review while I'm here. Keep an eye out for that. All right, let me get rid of this stuff and I'll show you the backpack that I'm using. All right, so this is a Peak Design Everyday Backpack. There's two different versions, a 20L and a 30L. This is the 20L, the smaller one. This is the backpack I use pretty much every day. Now I've got it loaded down a lot more since I was flying. This is specifically made for cameras, but I mean, you could use it for whatever you want. So to start, this is a separate bag that they sell called a field pouch that I just hooked to this with some cheap carabiners that I bought off of Amazon. So let's get this off. So basically this just opens up and you've got some different pockets in here. I've got SD cards for my cameras. Got a little battery backup mouse for my laptop and i think pretty much everything else is chargers or charger blocks cables i've got some batteries for my action camera and that's pretty much it in there so to start you've got these two 
outside pouches. In this pouch here, I had my tripod. And in this pouch here, I've got another kind of tripod that lets you bend in certain ways. While I was editing this video, I realized I was missing a big chunk of what I filmed while I was in the hotel room. So I'm refilming it now that I'm back home. I put everything back in my bag that I had when I was flying. So let's pick up where I left off. So both of these side compartments where I had the tripods in and receipts apparently have these straps to where if you put something in here, you can hook it back on this loop here, cinch it down and that helps to keep things secure when you have them in here. I really only use it when I've got tripods. You also have two straps in the bottoms of these little pockets that you can pull out to make a waist strap if you have your bag loaded down and need some extra support. So you've got these two straps that come out, hook it around your waist. I've honestly never used this, but it's nice to have it there in case I do need it. Bottom has a nice material, so if you're sitting it down in dirt or something, it's easy to clean. And actually, the material the bag's made out of is pretty easy to clean. I took this on my elk hunt, so it got full of dust, and I just kind of wiped it off when I got back, and it looked like new. You've got this compartment under here, which I keep some extra Ziploc bags just in case it rains and I need to keep things dry. But you also have a couple more straps that you can loop down here, keep like a jacket or a sleeping bag or something, or you can loop it up here. I see people carry tripods right here. So you could put your tripod there, crisscross it to keep it secure, however you wanna do it. And this closes with, there's a little magnet here so it stays closed. Got a little loop here you can hook stuff to if you needed to with a carabiner or whatever. The back has some padding and it also has a pass-through. So you can put this over your luggage if you're going through the airport and don't feel like carrying it. You could just slide it on over the handle. The straps aren't the most comfortable thing in the world. I've heard a lot of people complaining about them. I don't mind them too much. They're not too bad. You also have a chest strap that you can set up. So there's a few spots you can hook these on depending on how high you want it. But basically you just hook it in here, find the other spot on this side, hook it in there and cinch it down. If you don't feel like using the chest strap, you can keep it hooked in here and slide that there to where it's readily accessible. I don't use it that often, so I just keep it off and just keep it in one of these little side compartments. And these compartments expand pretty good. You can keep a big water bottle in here and it keeps it pretty tight. I wouldn't put anything loose in it because there are holes where some of the straps come out. So I wouldn't put loose items or change or anything in there because you will lose it. These clasps here allow this top compartment to expand depending on how much stuff you have in it, right? So normally I don't keep too much in this top compartment. So it's down on this last clasp. But if you start stuffing things in it, you want to take a jacket off, stick it in there. It gives you a lot more storage. And the way this bag is set up is you have this main compartment here, which when I was flying, I had my wireless headphones, which I always use when I'm flying. Drone remote control. I had my external mic, EpiPen, and one of my drone batteries in this top compartment. So as you can see, you've got a nice compartment here, a little pouch here that has a magnet. So that's how it looks when it's closed all the way down. Then you have your laptop section. So 13 inch MacBook Pro, you can see in here, it's got two sleeves so you can keep like a smaller iPad or something like that in a laptop. It gets pretty tight with the laptop and an iPad in here, but it is doable. You kind of have to pull both of them out at the same time to take one out or put both of them together and put them in at the same time, but it does fit. And then you also have this little pouch section here for quick access. So I just keep like a, a notepad. One of my little hard drives was in here that I used to edit footage off of. So that's the cable to that. Got some cash I just threw in here. It's kind of a mess since I just got back from traveling. Pen, a little secondary wallet. I keep some other cards and medical card and some other cash in. And then I'll drop change in here. And that's about it. But this is nice for a quick little access. And now let's get to this side, what I like about this bag is it zips open so you can take it off one shoulder, swing it around in front of you, open this up and access your gear pretty quick. So as you can see, you have different sections in here. 
I had this camera in this middle section when I was traveling. In this section here, I've got my Mavic 2 Pro, my drone. And here I've got basically all my filters. These two are ND filters for my, my big camera. And I've got some filters for my drone and the action camera. And then you've got this zippered section here on each side, both sides have it. I don't stick a whole lot of stuff in here because it can get kind of tight, especially when I have my camera in here. So I don't keep a lot of stuff in here. I keep my, my lapel mic in here on this side and lens cloth and what's in here. Here. This is a little tool to help get the filters on and off the drone and hot shoe cover. That's pretty much all I keep in here. I'll throw receipts or stuff in here or change sometimes, but like I said, I don't keep much in there. And that covers the footage that I was missing. So let's jump back to the hotel room. All right, on this side, I've got two more drone batteries. And like I said, you can, you know, you can fold this stuff up to make it organized however you want it, which is really cool. These are all Velcro on the side, so you can move these up or down, or I could just take this one out to give me a big space, or you can take them all out and use it just like a regular bag. I kind of like it how it's modular, that way you can make your own setup, which is one of the reasons why I got this bag. And then on this pocket, I've got an extra camera battery, two nine volts for my external mic. And that's pretty much it. Like I said, I don't keep a lot of stuff in these side compartments. They are stretchy, so it lets you fit things and it holds them snug, but it just gets a little bit tight when this center compartment's packed. So I don't keep much in there. That's pretty much it for the bag. I think I'm pushing this bag to its limits a bit as far as when I'm traveling on a plane. So I am looking at getting either the bigger version of this or a different bag completely. Loa Pro has something called the Pro Tactic 450, which I'm thinking about trying. But after traveling today, I do need something bigger. I'd also like to look at some of the Vertex bags and see if I can kind of convert one of those into a travel slash camera bag. So if you're interested in more bag reviews, and stuff like that, let me know in the comments. I know a lot of you out there dig bags and everyday carry bags and slings and stuff like that. So if you wanna see more videos on that, let me know in the comments. And then while I'm flying, I try to look pretty inconspicuous. I don't like to wear anything that screams guns or anything. So black shirt, those of you that know me won't be surprised with that. Got the Vertex jeans on, like I mentioned, pair of tennis shoes, my Apple watch, and I've got this sweet, multi-cam black hat from LLOD. That is Last Line of Defense, which is a YouTube channel I've been watching for a while. It's ran by a guy named Mike out of Colorado. He does some firearms related stuff and then some outdoor stuff called Overlanding or what he calls Weekender Landing. He puts out good videos and I like to support the channels I watch. So that's why I got this hat. Also because it was multi-cam black, which is pretty sweet. And that's pretty much it. I don't think you need to go through my main luggage bag unless you're interested in the underwear I use, which I don't think you are. Other than clothes and stuff, I got all my charging stations for all my, my camera and all my other gear. Since I'm gonna be shooting tomorrow, I brought my Ear Pro and my Eye Pro, and that's pretty much it. I'm a bit of a coffee snob, so I've got this little pack for my coffee in the mornings because I don't really like hotel coffee. So I use an AeroPress when I travel, ground my own coffee, got my scales and my mug. So I know I'll at least have one or two good cups of coffee every day before I head out of here or while I'm editing this video. And speaking of, I can use some coffee right now. I've been up since 2.30 in the morning to catch this flight. So I'm due for a good cup of coffee. So I guess that's where I'll end this video. Keep an eye out for some more content coming from this week up here visiting Palmetto State Armory. I also have some defensive gun use breakdowns coming out soon, so keep an eye out for those. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.